AMD has more plans for their GPUs than we thought. There's more plans for monitors, making them go really resolution-y and really speedy, and Apple is getting ready to launch a car sooner than I would have expected. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off talking about a patent application that was filed by AMD for some 3D vCache technology, which is the buzzword that they've been throwing around for their next generation CPUs that we're expecting them to launch in January, February timeframe. That's gonna give us about 15% better gaming performance out of the chips that we already have. But now the twist, the little plot spinner, the Bruce Willis is dead the entire time moment is that they're gonna be in GPUs too, according to this trademark that's being filed for 3D vCache, mentioning GPUs in the trademark filing 23 times as opposed to the 12 times where CPUs are mentioned, which does seem to be indicating that AMD has a higher potential future for 3D vCache on their GPUs. We've already seen them roll out this technology to some extent when it comes to the current RDNA 2 GPUs with their Infinity Cache. Now just imagine that they bring their 3D vCache technology to Infinity Cache, and then we could see a lot more gaming performance out of GPUs for a lot less memory bandwidth, which is one of the reasons why Infinity Cache is such a big deal on RDNA 2 GPUs. It'll allows them to get the extra gaming performance out of a 256-bit bus. It's something that you actually want to see them implement. And if their claims are true and the demonstrations that they've so shown on stage are actually good, then we might be seeing a lot better gaming performance coming out of their GPUs. Are you excited for this? Or does it, again, not matter because pricing and availability and who cares about GPUs, Brett, when we can't buy any at a good price? I hear you, just shout that down below in the comments while I shout to the wind about the DDR5 shortage that's out there, especially with all of you who I know are picking up Alder Lake chips at the current moment, DDR5 seems to be in short supply. But now the latest report coming out is that this has nothing to do with the RAM supply. All of the companies that make the DRAM chips are totally A-OK, -okay, but rather this has to do with the power management integrated circuit chip that goes onto DDR5 to allow it to actually power everything that's going on. and it's about 10 times more expensive than the one that was on DDR4, and it has a 35 week back order right now. Which in case you can't do math, 35 weeks is like almost a year. Like if you round up, that's a whole year that you have to wait in order to get your DDR5 PMIC chips, which means that DDR5 is a slow rollout as of the current moment. This is something that I've been encountering as I've been trying to get review samples for UFD Tech. I've been reaching out to all of the memory companies that I have contacts with, and they've just been like, Brett, haven't you heard? There's a DDR5 shortage. We sent one sample to Linus and that's all we have, okay? Don't ask us, you're too small, to, to, just please. Please, Brett, please. But, I mean, how much does this affect you really? Are you really planning on upgrading the DDR5 on Alder Lake of all things, or are you waiting until AMD switches over to DDR5? I just, that's that's my thought. But speaking of useless things that you can't currently get your hands on, TCL is showing off some TV technology that I want in my bones, my friends, it's showing off a 32 inch 4K 240 Hertz LCD screen. But more importantly, you know, 4K 240 is great. They showed off an 8K, mini LED, 265 hertz, 75 inch. Look at this bad boy. I don't even remember what I was saying, but this is absolutely, give it to me. TCL doesn't make panels, so we're likely going to see other TV manufacturers bring this out at some point in the future. No release date, no specifications besides that, but 8K, 265 hertz. Do I have anything that can drive this 205 gigabit per second panel? No, do I? Whatever gonna have that? Maybe when I'm like an octogenarian, but I just, I want it. TCL, if you're listening, if you got any love for your boy Brett, maybe just consider sending one of these my way. And I'm gonna send your way the Crypto Stonks update, which by the way, I thank everybody who gave me their input on the Crypto Stonks update. There were a few people who were just like, no, it's a stupid segment, get rid of it. But the vast majority of you were like, Yes, keep it, obviously. So let's keep going with that, with Bitcoin continuing to keep going on down, down 4% on the day to be at $58,000. This is the first time it's been under $60,000 in quite some time. Actually, that's a lie. October 27th, it was below 60, but it's continuing its drag down. Ethereum also
also down 4.6% to sit at 4060 right now. And Dogecoin also down roughly 5% to sit at 22 cents. Let's find out what happened with the meme stonks. GameStop down ever so slightly, 0.35% to close out the day. And AMC down 4% to close out at 4044. Which the most important thing that I can ever mention, obviously when it comes to AMC, is a large prostate. Try this tonight. Listen, I, I have ad blocker on when it comes to doing hot news just so that I'm not bombarding you guys with ads when I read from all of these articles, but sometimes they just get through like this prostate ad. I don't know what to do with that. Well, I just, maybe I should find another source, but at this point I find it hilarious, which, you know, if you want a good prostate, a healthy dosage of crypto stunks will allow you to have that to happen. What, let's stay on the crypto side of things, my friends, because there's a current debate going around about NFTs. Are they even sensible? Do they make any sense? Should you be having them? I'm not gonna get into that debate here because I have my own internal opinions, which I'm going to voice inevitably at some point in this segment, but somebody decided, hey, all of those precious little bored apes you have and all that kind of stuff would be a shame if somebody scrounged the internet, downloaded them, and then put it up as a torrent site. The NFT Bay making its debut yesterday with somebody hosting a server after they went through all of the links from the NFTs that are out there, found their source and downloaded that. Right click saved those images and then put them as a torrent that you could potentially go out and get. Which obviously everybody who's against NFTs was like, yes, haha, what are you gonna do now, crypto bros? We right click saved all of them. Which then the NFT community responded with, like, uh, bro, this has nothing to do with what NFTs are because NFT is about the ownership and not the actual image, okay? Which is true and it's not true. I just, I continuously think that the worst implementation for NFTs is art. It doesn't make any conceptual sense, especially with how the internet was brought about. Why would you take something that was like democratized, which is image sharing and file sharing, and then just be like, nope, I own it now, this is mine, okay? You think you have it, but you don't, all right? The whole meme culture kind of negates NFT culture. That's at least how I see it in my mind. The thing that NFTs do well is something that it's like a commemoration token. It allows you to participate in a communal activity. Let's say you find a band that you really like and you want to prove that you're supporting them from an early time. You get an NFT token on their first album drop and then you can show that you've been with them the entire time. And then if they blow up, that NFT grows in value. You can sell it. You get a huge cut out of it because you were an early adopter. And then the band also takes a percentage of that cut. NFTs for like commemorative community stuff, good. NFTs as bored apes, just crypto bros with too much money. That's that's my perspective. I don't, I'm probably gonna offer this perspective for the next thousand years. But let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. Apple letting you know what they think. Actually not because they're staying silent on this, but Bloomberg reporting that Apple should be ready to release their self-driving car sometime in 2025. With Apple's ideal version of the car having a lounge-like seating for passengers, touchscreen infotainment system, and then no steering wheels or pedals. I just, what? We're not four years away from that. Are we four years away from like good level two autonomous driving? Maybe even level three? Yeah. Are we four years away from you removing my ability to counteract a self-driving car? Heck no. But continuing on in this Bloomberg portion, it does say that Apple might be considering two different paths, creating a model with limited self-driving capabilities focused on steering and acceleration, similar to cars from Tesla, et cetera. I think that's the one that makes sense in four years. I don't think we're gonna be at full self-driving stacked vehicles in four years. That's just, I, again, not a neural net developer for all of the stuff that's going on with Tesla vehicles, but considering the current state of full self-driving beta, I think that I'm safe in that assumption. And you know who's safe from money being taken from them, NVIDIA, because they announced their third quarter fiscal results for 2022 coming out and saying, hey, we made a lot of it, wouldn't you? Who would have thought if everybody's buying our stuff, we make a lot of money. They're up roughly 50% from last year and 9% from the previous quarter with a revenue of $7.1 billion. The CEO Jensen Wong saying the third quarter was outstanding with record revenue. Nvidia just making tons and tons of cash, $7.1 billion. That's absolutely crazy. This, however, does tie in to, I, I'm gonna call it a conspiracy 
conspiracy theory. I don't really think it's that, but just the idea that Nvidia might be limiting production on GPUs right now intentionally so that this number of being up 50% year on year and 9% quarter on quarter, they can also then increase for the next quarter as well. Q4 financial year 2022, they could also say they're up 10% because they just produced a few more GPUs as opposed to Q3, and that makes it so that the revenues are going up. Gaming, the shareholders, is that happening? I don't know, I'm not a multi-billion dollar CEO named Jensen Wong, but I can tell you that that's a thought that's out there on the internet. And what's another thought out there on the internet is that Nvidia shouldn't buy ARM. I think that's like the general consensus out there besides people at Nvidia. And the FTC is kind of sort of being like, yeah, let's consider this a little bit further. Nvidia and the FTC coming out and saying regulators at the U US Federal Trade Commission have expressed concerns regarding the transaction. And we are engaged in discussions with the FTC regarding remedies to address those concerns. This is in addition to the EU actually launching a formal investigation against Nvidia and their acquiring of ARM to make one super conglomeration company that then owns all of the stuff that's used by a bunch of other companies like Apple. And that couldn't potentially harm the entire ecosystem. There's no way that could be wrong, but the FTC wants to investigate it. And who am I to stand in the way between FTC and investigating Nvidia? Nobody, I'm a dude on your computer screen, which I will be no longer because that's the end of this episode of Hot News for the week. I wanna thank everybody who's joined us for this first week back here at UFD Tech with Hot News. I appreciate all of the support as we've done this transition and just the recognition uh, that I am a man who's capable of running one channel and one channel only. So thank you so much for supporting us. I'll see you in another video tomorrow that's hot, not Hot News, allegedly. And then I'll be back with Hot News on Monday. Chip Cheerios.